In today's lesson, we will be learning about something called Bayes' Theorem. The notes and worksheet will be one document, and what we don't finish in our notes today will be our homework on worksheet 11. So if you recall earlier in the unit, we talked about how with an AND statement or an OR statement, order does not matter. So the probability of B and A is the same as the probability of A and B. We also stressed how this ability to commute the probabilities back and forth is not true for the conditional probability. So the probability of A given B is not the same thing as the probability of B given A. There is different, different given information, therefore the likelihood of the events is not the same. So we talked about how when events are dependent, we can use the following equations. And notice the only difference is um, dependent upon which value is given. So in the first one, A is my given event. And recall we talked about how the probability of B given A is equal to your AND statement divided by that given probability, or rather whichever probability was after the bar is under the bar. And if you look at this equation over here, it's essentially the same equation. The only difference is that now B is the given information, therefore probability of B is the denominator of my fraction. In both cases, probability of B and A and the probability of A and B are the same. Okay, so what happens if I want to find the probability of A given B and I don't know the probability of B? Well, this is an issue because everything we've talked about says whichever um, event is the given event, that is the individual probability that we need. And that's what we've learned so far, and without that, we wouldn't know what to do. Bayes' theorem allows us to see the relationship between one conditional probability of A given B and its inverse, which is probability of B given A. So in order to figure that out, we're going to look at the complement. So the probability of B given A complement means the probability of B given A did not happen. Now when you first look at Bayes' theorem, which is this big mess down here, uh, it looks very daunting, and in fact, you do not need to memorize this formula. You don't even really need to use this formula. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use a tree diagram that will mimic the same thought process that this big formula gives us. All right, let's take a look at our first example. Okay, in this first example, the problem says that an employer is looking to fill some positions and several college graduates are interviewed. From past experience, we know that the employer will offer second interviews to 75% of the college graduates. Of those graduates offered second interviews, 70% of them will be hired. Only 5% of the college graduates offered second interviews will be hired. All right, now, first point, or first of all, we need to know when Bayes' theorem applies. And when we read the problem and we start hearing multiple levels of information, it's this or this, and then based on that, it's this or this. Notice that each um, option has trees that follow off of it. So it's conditional probability because in order to go down one path, you had to have first pass the path before it. That's when you know you want to use Bayes' theorem. All right, so if we were to trace these paths, um, we know first of all that second interviews are only offered to 65% of the college graduates. So this right here would be the probability of a second interview. And this right here, the 0.35, would be the probability of no second interview. From here, the next piece of information says that of those graduates offered second interviews, so that's my given information. So given that I was already offered a second interview, 70% of them will be hired. So this branch right here, this 0.7, this would be the probability that the individual is hired given that they had a second interview. Now if they are not hired, then that would be the 0.3. Okay, either you're hired or you're not. And that would be the probability that you are not hired given that you had that second interview. Now, if we take a look at the other piece of information, 
The last thread says that only 5% of the college graduates who are not offered second interviews will be hired. So if we follow the path of having no second interview and being hired, that would be this guy right here. And so that would be the probability of being hired with no second interview. And then this bottom one, if you are not hired, it would be 1 minus 0 0.05 which would be the probability of not getting hired given that you had no second interview. Okay, now if you think about what we learned about AND statements, recall that when events were dependent, we learned that the probability of A and B was equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given A. And if you look at our Bayes theorem, basically any one of these paths that we follow is going to help us find the AND statement. So take a look at this top path, for example. If we take a look at this and followed this trend right here, if I wanted to find the probability of having a second interview and being hired, then I could figure that out by looking at the probability of having a second interview times the probability of being hired given that I had a second interview. And so if I look at this path along the top, that will basically tell me the outcome of that path. So second interview, getting the job. I could have a second interview and not get the job. I could have no second interview and get the job, no second interview and not get the job. So there are four possible outcomes that I could see here based on my tree diagram. And one of the things that we'll talk about on the next page is how we can multiply all of these possible outcomes. Now, if we think about it, either you get a second interview or you don't, and either you get the job or you don't. So there are a total of four outcomes, and if we multiply out all of these paths, the four outcomes will add up to one, because that gives us all of our possible options. So let's go to the next page and see how that looks. Okay, what we can do on this page, like I said a minute ago, was that we can multiply these numbers together, and that will give me my AND statement. So the probability that I was offered a second interview AND was hired. So what we're going to do is quickly multiply all of these out. So 0 0.65 times 0 0.7 and 0 0.65 times 0.3 and so on. And as we multiply all of these numbers going across, we will recognize that they all add up to equal 1. And the reason why this works is because um, this tree represents all the possible outcomes. Either we get the job or we don't, we had a second interview or we didn't. There's only four possible outcomes that we can see here. All right, let's go ahead and answer some questions related to this diagram and see how it can be useful for us. Okay, so my first question asks, what is the probability of getting offered a second interview and not getting hired? So basically, all we want to do is follow the branches. Since this is an AND statement, we are looking for one of these decimals at the end that is the product. These answers right here are the given that probabilities, and the product is my AND. So getting offered a second interview and not getting hired, that would be represented in the 0.195. And I'm just going to leave all these answers in decimal form for the time being. I would accept decimals or fractions. What is the probability of getting hired and, again, and looking at the product, not being offered a second interview? So getting hired and not being offered a second interview, that would be this guy right here. 0.0175. All right, question three asks, what is the probability of a randomly selected graduate from the original group being hired? Okay, so if we think about this, there are multiple ways to get hired. We could have a second interview and get hired, or we could have no second interview and get hired. 
So if we look at all of the possible ways that we can get hired, and I'm going to outline these in green, this is one way that we can get hired, and this is another way that we can get hired. So we're going to add those two decimals together. And our answer will give us 0.4725. What is the probability of getting hired given that a second interview was granted? Okay, so when I see this given that a second interview was granted, that basically tells me which branch I need to follow in my middle row. So given that a second interview was granted, that's going to be this guy right here. These probabilities on the top branch are the path taken after getting offered a second interview. And the probability of getting hired, given that you had a second interview, is just going to be this 0.7 number. The nice thing about Bayes' theorem is that the products give us our AND statements, and that middle tier gives us our given that probabilities. All right, question five says, what is the probability of having had a second interview given that somebody was hired. All right, now in this problem, this is a little bit different. Notice in question four, the given information was how that middle tier was labeled. Being offered a second interview, that is what my middle tier was telling me. In problem five, it says, what is the probability of having had a second interview given that someone was hired? Well, being hired was not my second tier. So this is kind of like how we started the lesson, saying the probability of B given A is not the same thing as the probability of A given B, recall that? So for that reason, I can't just look at that middle tier. This is where I have to start um, working around with my formula. So if I write out what I'm asking you to find, probability of having had a second interview given that someone was hired, if we think about how we would find this, we would first find the probability of a second interview and hired divided by the probability of being hired. All right, so second interview and hired. Um, that would be that top um, answer following the paths of second interview and being hired, which would give us point. 455 five, divided by the probability of just being hired in general. And we just found this a minute ago in question three. And in question three, the way that we found the probability of being hired was by adding both ways that a person could be hired. We said they could be hired after a second interview and they could be hired without a second interview. And so in this case, when I work this out, um, I end up getting 0.963. All right, for our next example, I want you to go ahead and set up the diagram yourself and then unpause the video and see if your diagram matches mine. Okay, in this diagram, I have labeled the different movies TV, SM, and KH. And the first piece of information that we are given is that out of 60 tickets sold, 20 were for Killhard, which is one-third, 30 were for Teen Vampire, which is one-half, and 10 were for Strip Mall Dog Rangers, which is where I got the one-sixth. So this was my first row of information. After that, we have that three-fourths of the Killhard viewers are male, which is why I have three-fourths and one-fourth. Two-thirds of Teenage Vampire were female, which is why I have two-thirds and one-third, and half of the Dog Rangers were female. The numbers that you see in blue, those are going to be my ands, which are my um, products. So, for example, the way that I got this um, one six that I just circled is by saying that half of the moviegoers saw Teenage Vampire, and of the half of those, one third were male, therefore one sixth of the moviegoers saw Teenage Vampire and were male. All right, so the first question says, what is the probability that the ticket holder is a male who saw a teenage vampire? And like I just explained, we would do one half times one third, which gives us one sixth. Question seven. What is the probability that the ticket holder is a female who also saw kill her? All right, so in this case, who also saw, that's another way of saying and. So it's a female and she saw kill hard four. So we're going to go ahead and do kill hard is one third 
times a female is one fourth. So a person who saw Kilhard and is a female would be a one twelfth probability. All right, if we take a look at question eight, what is the probability that the ticket holder is female? Well, there are multiple ways that a female can go to the movies. I'm going to circle them above in green. A female can go to the movies and see Teenage Vampire. A female can go to the movies and see Strip Mall Dog Rangers. And a female can go to the movies and see Killhard. So there are three different ways, three different paths that result in a female going to the movies. So we are going to add all of these outcomes up. We have one third plus one twelfth plus one twelfth, and that gives us six twelfths or one half. Um, lastly, question nine says, what is the probability that if the ticket holder is female, that she saw Killhard for? All right, so this is kind of like the last problem we had on the previous example. So probability that the person saw Killhard if or given they are a female. And in this case, the given information is no longer the second tier. If we look at our problem, the given tier on this problem is the movie that was seen. And that wasn't the case here. This is reverse backwards order. So instead what we need to do is actually write out an equation. So we are looking at the probability the person saw kill hard and is female divided by the probability that the person who went to the movies is a female. And if we look up here, we already um, know Killhard and female is 1 12th based on our um, diagram above. So we are going to have 1 12th. And then the probability that the moviegoer is a female, we just found that in problem 8, is 1 half. And when we go ahead and simplify this, we have 1 12th multiply by the reciprocal gives us one sixth. All right, for homework tonight, you want to go ahead and finish worksheet 11.